Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our webinar from Benenden Hospital. Just allow a few seconds for you to join. It's excellent to see so many of you signed up tonight. Okay, um, a very warm welcome to our webinar this evening from Benenden Hospital. Uh, tonight we are covering knee replacement surgery. My name's Phil, I'll be your host for the session and I'm joined by our expert speaker, our Associate Specialist Surgeon, Mr. Kumar Reddy. For those of you who haven't attended one of these webinars before, the format is as follows. Mr. Reddy will conduct a presentation which will last around 25 minutes approximately, and this will be followed by a question and answer session. If you wish to submit a question to Mr. Reddy, you can do so during his presentation or following his presentation, and you can do so by clicking the Q&A icon, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. Now, I should mention that you can do this anonymously, or you can give your name, uh, but please bear in mind that we are recording this session if you do provide your name. If you wish to book your consultation following this session, we'll be giving details at the end of the webinar. That's quite enough from me for the time being. Uh, I will hand over to our expert speaker, Mr. Kumar Reddy. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking your valuable time in joining this webinar. Uh, I hope this webinar will be useful. I'm going to talk to you about the knee replacement surgery and its indications, um, and also the post uh, knee replacement, um, the effects of knee replacement. I hope you'll enjoy this session. And uh, Phil, thank you so much for the introduction. My pleasure. Uh, I'm one of the lower limb orthoplasty surgeons. I've been um, doing hip and knee replacements for the last 25 years. Uh, my large NHS practice is at Kenton Canterbury and William Harvey Hospital where I do most of uh, the joint replacements, uh, including uh, revision, total hips, and total knee replacements. Um, we got um, quite a team of, um, big team of orthopedic consultants uh, working at Benenden Hospital uh, who perform lower limb surgery. Uh, I'll be going through with you all with regard to definition of arthritis and its treatment and the surgeries, what is going to be required and uh, the types of knee replacements and the surgical process in brief, uh, recovery process, risk, and uh, also talk about the patient tools. Uh, I've been an orthopedic surgeon and I'm um, currently the site lead at William Harvey Hospital and uh, a member of Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. My clinical interest and surgical interests are mainly uh, total hip replacements, uh, total knee replacements, partial knee replacements, um, revision hip and knee replacements, arthroscopy, ACL reconstruction, and uh, meniscectomies and meniscal repairs. Um, you'll, all, you'll all be pleased to know that we, uh, the Benenden Hospital is the leading provider of for private hip and knee orthoplasty surgeries in Kent. Um, with regard to patient satisfaction rates, we've got very high satisfaction rate with, when compared to other hospitals and trusts. And uh, we are also heavily involved in rapid recovery program. 
here is our orthopedic uh, consultants who are experts in uh, lower limb orthoplasty surgeons, uh, who are uh, Alex Chipperfield, William Dunnett, Matthew Oliver, Raman Thakur, uh, Omaryani, Raj Vastava, who just has retired, uh, Richard Goddard and Mark Jones, who recently joined our team. Uh, with regard to private knee replacement unit volumes, you can see uh, from the slide that uh, the Hoda Center, which stands 305, Brandon Hospital is 225 from last year, but this year we'll be heading towards uh, 450 a year. Next is Kim's, which was last year 175 there, also increase in volume with regard to the replacement surgeries. Uh, Nafield Tunbridge Wells, and uh, Ashford one. So what is osteoarthrosis? Uh, with regard to arthritis, it's a common disease affecting the joints of the body, most commonly the knee and the hip. Uh, the joint surfaces which are smooth over a period of time, uh, it, they would get damaged and gradually the articular cartilage becomes thin and roughened and there'll be loss of cart cartilage as you can see in the slide on areas where the bare bone is exposed. This would result in immense pain uh, and this was also cause a stiffness in the joint, um, pain on weight bearing and you will also find sensation of clicking and grinding sensation in the knee. And there will be recurrent swellings and also effusions of the knee. And the late symptoms, you can see rest pain and also pain that wakes you up at night. And you'll also be noticing some deformity like uh, the bone getting bowed. Mm and also sometimes the bone can go into other direction where you can develop a, a valgus knee resulting in a knocked knee. Uh, and your walking ability also will be getting reduced because of the pain. You can see from the slide, the normal knee on the left, which shows a good preservation of the joint surface all throughout. And you can see on the right side, there's a complete obliteration of the joint space with osteophytes all around in the lateral compartment. And also you can see the spines becoming quite prominent, indicating that this is an arthritic joint. With regard to treatment options of uh, knee osteoarthrosis, not that we all jump into doing a knee replacement surgery in the beginning, and um, everyone has to be sensible and go for uh, the activity modification, uh, like if one is playing uh, impact sports, they need to reduce and be aware that uh, uh, mostly impact activities can cause more pain. And also uh, one is uh, overly overweight, then it would be reasonable for them to go for a weight loss program and get the weight reduced so that uh, one can offload the weight on the joint. Uh, next is physiotherapy. Physiotherapy can be very beneficial uh, with regard to strengthening of the quadriceps uh, and also improve the extensor mechanism. Uh, next is taking by simple painkillers and also taking some paracetamol, neurofen or naproxen and cocodamol. All these can help in relieving the pain. There are some braces which are offloading braces. You can have weight relieving braces for your knees and uh, injections also in the early to moderate phase can significantly help in improving the symptoms. One is steroid injections, the other one are hyaluronic acid injections where we give them in Benden. Um, and also there are um, PRP injections that are available in the market. If all the conservative methods of treatment, which I've stated just now, fail to improve your symptoms, then uh, if one has got significant symptoms that are evidence on the radiological appearance, that he's got significant arthritis, then it would be reasonable to offer uh, surgical treatment, which can be uh, um, osteotomies in the form of realignment surgery, 
where we can correct the alignment of the knees by doing a high table osteotomies in uh, uh, genuvarum knees that would uh, help in relieving the symptoms as you are offloading the medial compartment and transmitting the load uh, evenly. Uh, the other techniques are orthoscopic techniques where if there is an isolated chondral defects, one can do a microfracturing uh, of the compartment to encourage the new cartilage to form. Um, and there are also in young patients where one can consider cartilage transplantation where we are not doing here at the moment. Um, it can be done in um, the tertiary referral, referral centers like in Stanmore or UCLH. Um, and uh, eventually one can consider knee replacement surgery, provided all these fail to give reasonable uh, pain relief. With regard to knee replacements, uh, surgery, it is uh, now a common uh, operation. Approximately 100,000 are performed in a year. Average age of the patient is between 68 to 17. Majority of the patients, 56.5% um, of female patients, and um, 95, 94, nearly 95% patient report health improvement in symptoms. 80% of the knee replacements can last and their survivorship is between 20 to 25 years. And one need to understand, uh, do I need a knee replacement surgery? If the pain is the limiting factor and if it is significantly affecting your sleep and quality of life and provided there is radiological evidence of um, arthritis in the form of narrowing uh, of the joint space significantly and provided all the conservative methods of treatment like physiotherapy, steroid injections uh, and uh, braces fail to improve the symptoms, it would be reasonable for one to be considered for a knee replacement. And the common conditions that one can come across is osteoarthrosis, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, post-traumatic arthritis where one had fractures um, of the tibial plateau uh, and um, if there are intraarticular fractures in the long term, this may go on for osteoarthrosis. Um, and there are other conditions like gout, uh, psoriasis also can contribute to arthritis. With regard to aims of knee replacement surgery, uh, improve in pain relief. Um, there'll be a tremendous amount of pain reduction following a knee replacement surgery. Uh, increase in mobility, restoration of function, and um, re realignment of the mechanical axis. Uh, in younger patients, it is a high function demands such as work and sports. Um, some of the patients would have gone back to non-impact activities like cycling and swimming and also uh, higher impact sports like getting back to football or tennis. Um, it is not advisable as this, these are artificial joints and these artificial joints are subjected to wear and tear. It would be best avoided any impact activities. But uh, most of the patients can return back to golf and other activities. What are the types of re, uh, knee replacements that one can offer at Ben and Ben? So there's a partial knee replacement, which we call it uh, a medial unicompartmental or a lateral unicompartmental. With the med medial unicompartmental, you have Oxford unicompartmental knee replacements, uh, which are again is a mobile bearing. And whereas Zook unicompartmental knee replacements are uh, a fixed bearing, and uh, both are um, doing extremely well in the National Joint Registry. And the uh, second one is a lateral unicompartmental knee replacement, which I do when uh, individuals have got isolated lateral compartment osteoarthrosis. 
Um, these are mainly done as a fixed bearing knees as uh, mobile bearings will have increased risk of dislocation. Um, if the arthritis is spread to all of the compartments, including petrofemoral and other compartments, then it would be reasonable for one to consider for a total knee replacement. You also have got a petrofemoral joint replacement where uh, some patients we see have got isolated petrofemoral pain, mainly when they come downstairs, they struggle to come downstairs and they have difficulty in uh, couching and kneeling. Um, they have to hold on to banisters and do one step at a time. When there is isolated petrofemoral uh, arthritis, it would be reasonable to offer them a petrofemoral replacement. Then with regard to the partial knee, I can show you here where you can see only part of the knee, which is the, on the medial side, have been replaced. Uh, and you can see the uh, on the tibial side, you can see a metal back tibia along with the plastic, which is moving. This is what a partial knee is. And... Uh, the other compartments are well left alone as you do not see any arthritis in the lateral or petrofemoral compartments. And with regard to total knee replacement, this is how a total knee looks. All you need to do is shave the articular surfaces of the arthritic bones at the end of your thigh bone called the femur. And then you shape the femur for the knee replacement uh, process and you put the femur in uh, which is like a vanguard knee replacement and also on the tibial side again you resurface the tibia and uh, shave uh, the articular surface off and then put in a, a tibial component so at the end of the thigh bone you have uh, the metal component which articulates with the plastic so this is how a knee replacement looks. Again, you have got a cruciate retaining where the cruciate ligaments are being, uh, the posterior cruciate ligament is retained uh, when you call it a cruciate retaining. And if the cruciates have gone, if there's an increased posterior slope in the tibia, then one can, one can consider a posterior stabilized total knee replacement. Um, and there is also replacements that are available um, and it will be soon available at Benenden with regard to robotic knee replacement surgery, which aids the surgeon in performing a knee replacement with the robotic assistance. Um, it'll be here and my colleagues are, are going to give another webinar with regard to robotic knee replacement surgery um, in January. Uh, you're all welcome to join for this um, robotic uh, knee replacement surgery, uh, which is coming soon. Then you got uh, constrained total knee replacements and you got revision where we put the stems in to the thigh bone and the shin bone and uh, make it stabilized. Um, and in severe deformities, these are useful and also when the ligaments have failed, like mainly the medial collateral ligament, which is the chief stabilizer, if they fail, then one can consider a constrained total knee replacement. You can see the Vanguard knee replacement. This is the one that we use at Benden. This is um, I've got a good survivorship. And the ODEP rating of the Vanguard knee replacements is 15A ODEP rating. And uh, it, the 10 year survivorship is about 97%. Um, these are basically cemented total knee replacement. And you can resurface the patella if there is arthritis in the patella, or they can be done without the patella resurfacing. We again have uh, got cruciate retaining and post stabilized vanguard total knee replacements. So with regard to surgical process, what happens uh, during the knee replacement surgery? So one, one would have a midline longitudinal incision and the disease joint has been replaced with uh, your bony cuts 
And once you have uh, resurfaced the cuts, then you can plan your replacement as I've just shown you by putting the femoral component in into the thigh bone and at the end of the shin bone where it is tibia and fibula, you can insert the tibial component into this. So this is how the knee replacements are performed. So uh, uh, with regard to coming to recovery from a knee replacement surgery, you, though on my slide it stays two to three days in hospital, majority of the patients um, are discharged within uh, a day or two. Uh, especially the unicompartmental knee replacements, uh, they are getting discharged within a day um, as the recovery is quicker and the patients prefer to be at home rather than hospital. We encourage that. Um, and you will have a large protective dressing on the knee uh, and pain will be controlled with the regular pain medications. And also patients do get, uh, um, in addition to spinal, an electrocanal block to help with the pain. Um, and you will be soon visited by our physiotherapist team. And we've got an excellent team of physiotherapists who will uh, help you regain your mobility, uh, range of motions and function. We also have got excellent, uh, highly skilled uh, team of uh, nursing staff who looks after the inpatients on the wards. They provide you all the information that you need and help you regain uh, your mobility. Uh, with regard to recovery from knee replacement surgery, uh, we only let you leave the hospital once everyone is happy that it is safe for you to do so and you are mobilizing independently with the help of crutches or frame that you've been provided with and you'll be shown how to safely go up and down stairs if you've got stairs at home um, and after about a week most people can walk independently with sticks. We encourage all our patients to take painkillers on a regular basis uh, to help with the pain and uh, uh, there'll be some bruising around the staples. Um, if you do not wish to have staples and we can use uh, dissolvable stitches uh, following knee replacement surgery and regular exercises are quite important before and after surgery. Um, majority of the patients do complain of some numbness, which is not uncommon after knee replacement on the outer aspect of your knee and uh, some of them have got some medial pain around the top of the shin bone, which is again not uncommon. After six weeks, uh, one can resume driving short distances and uh, you will have your appointment to be seen by uh, the respective consultants who has performed your surgery at six week interval. And uh, you, any questions or concerns that you may have, he will be addressing all those issues at a six week interval. Um, one would uh, assume for uh, patients who had knee replacement to return to normal activity after three months. With regard to potential risks that one can anticipate, there is um, a risk of um, uh, blood transfusion when there is increased blood loss and uh, there can be little fracture one can come across and there can be slight damage to the nerve of the vessel um, and the ligament uh, or tendon can be injured at the time of uh, surgery. With regard to recovery, wound problems, infection, um, uh, which is uh, uh, and I'm very pleased to let all of you know that infection rates in this particular hospital have been time and again proved to be less than the national average. Um, and uh, the other one is a DVT. One can develop clots in the veins of your leg uh, that can sometimes migrate into the lung and cause a PE. 
That's why everybody is given uh, blood thinning tablets or injections for a period of 14 days. You will also have um, uh, calf pumps in the form of Flotrons till your mobile uh, from your inpatient bed. Another one is stiffness and swelling of the knee, which is not uncommon. And um, one has to do regular exercises to get rid of the stiffness and improve the swelling. Late um, complications, which include infection, again, implant failure with regard to aseptic loosening, uh, where the polyplastic, which has been put in between the components, can wear off and there can be delamination of the poly which can contribute to loosening um, and uh, which may well require revision surgery if uh, the symptoms are getting worse. Uh, the others are uh, fracture and uh, dislocation which is again a very rare uh, following knee replacements. With regard to patients' decision support tools, it's an NGR surgeon's uh, profile. Um, it is in the public domain. Any one of you can look into the surgeons, how many a surgeon has performed or has performed over the years with regard to the knee replacements or hip replacement surgery uh, and their outcomes and the results. So if it's an outlier, it would highlight in the NJR. This is mainly not only to give you enough guidance, um, and also it will also monitor the surgeons and also the implants uh, that we are putting in nowadays. Uh, if an implant is failing soon, it would highlight that these implants are um, not very good and uh, they would abandon these implants uh, for further use. So it is a tool that gives us guidance with regard to choosing the implants and also with regard to long-term, how the surgeons are performing with regard to their joint replacement surgeries. And lastly, with regard to knee replacement, robotic uh, surgical assistance. So it is, um, everybody is catch up, catching up on uh, robotic knee replacement surgeries. And as you all know, about 3 million replacements are being done in a year throughout worldwide. And um, out of which about 11% are being done with the robotic assistance. Um, this at the end of the day, so your surgeon is still in charge and uh, this robotic uh, robots will help the consultant perform total knee replacement surgery with an uh, improved precision and uh, it gives a better alignment and uh, precision uh, when undertaking the knee replacement surgery. We do not know still the long-term outcomes, but um, we hope the long-term survivorship and the outcomes can significantly improve by doing this robotic knee replacement surgery. You will have a very detailed uh, webinar with regard to the surgeries, uh, on, which is coming up soon which is scheduled to be on the 9th of January at 6 p.m. Thank you all for listening to me. Now no, I would uh, pass it on to Paul, uh, Philip, um, for his... Uh... Thank you, Mr. Reddy, for that insight into the patient journey. Um, we can now take some questions from our attendees. So this person asks, would having a partial knee replacement be better for younger patients? I'm in my early 50s and would need a revision later in life. Yes, the answer to that question is certainly yes. If you are 50 years or younger, I believe, and if you got isolated uh, unicompartmental arthritis, mainly in the middle compartment as evidenced on the x-rays and uh, the and with regard to prerequisites uh, it is ideal one should have a anterior cruciate ligament being intact 
and there should not be any arthritic changes in the uh, lateral compartment of the knee and also your knee should not have a fixed flexion of more than 10 degrees and the knee flexion should be more than 100 degrees in case of unicompartmental knee replacements if one were to consider uh, and also the surgery in the long term because you distribute several million cycles of stress when compared to a 75 year old uh, it would also be, it would certainly be reasonable to consider you for a knee replacement as um, with the distribution of load and uh, millions of strike, cycles of stress, the joint replacement would wear off and doing a knee replacement later on is a much easier uh, way to do uh, rather than doing a revision in a total knee where we need to put stems into both thigh bone and the shin bone. Okay, thank you. This person asks, is it advisable to build up the knee muscles before surgery? Yes, 100% you need to, because your knee is defunctioned because of the pain, so it is, uh, and uh, wasting you get if you don't use the knee is quite a marked wasting of the muscles. Uh, and this is quite vital and it's a very important question that you asked. So all patients before knee replacement surgery, I would encourage them to do strengthening exercises within pain limits so that they would have a better function following surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question is, on average, how long does the operation last for a total knee replacement? Um, by and large, most of us, um, uh, we do knee replacements with less than an hour. Um, I have not been using tourniquets for the knees for the last 20 years. So it is uh, proved to be better uh, pain relief when compared to people who use tourniquets, but in the long term, it should not make any significant difference. Uh, so major, by and large, most of the knee replacements or partial knees are done less than an hour. Okay, thank you. This person asks, would I be able to go back to work on my feet most of the day after I've fully recovered? Um, normally it takes about, we say about three months is the ideal time for one to go back to work. Uh, so up to three months, um, if it's a sedentary job, you can go back after six weeks. Um, if you're standing up all day long, up to three to four months, we should be allowed to, uh, yeah, uh, to accommodate uh, your symptoms. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is quite a long question. I'm happy to repeat bits yeah. of it. Um, it's it's sort of two questions rolled into one. Um, this person asks, um, I have recently had a cortisone injection into my knee for my osteoarthritis. Um, an MRI scan showed I have severe patellofemoral osteoarthritis, an osteochondral defect and meniscus meniscal tearing. Is there a minimum time after a cortisone injection before a knee replacement can be carried out? Um, ideally, one should not recommend because cortisone is an anti-inflammatory uh, and um, ideally one should not uh, be rushing into doing a knee replacement surgery for a minimum period of, I would not do a knee replacement if one had an injection for a minimum period of um, th three to four months. So I think one has to be aware of this. So if uh, he has significant relief, then it indicates that he definitely has got severe arthritis, which has given some pain relief. But these steroid injections, one need to think that these are temporary and they're not a permanent cure. Thank they you. Say they say they're 74 years old um, and is it too soon to consider a knee replacement? How bad should one's knee be before considering knee replacement? I would always ask the patient how bad the pain is. Mm -hmm. If the pain is severe and if it is affecting his sleep and quality of life 
And if he has tried physiotherapy, some painkillers, because one cannot take keep on taking painkillers uh, the rest of uh, their lives because it can affect their kidneys and stomach. So it would be reasonable for one to be considered because 74 year old, um, it would, uh, if, it, if the pain is immense, it would be reasonable to offer a knee replacement provided there is X-ray evidence of severe arthritis. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, the next attendee asks, um, do I understand correctly that the Vanguard has only a 10-year validity period? Um, the, the slide I've shown was for 10 years, but uh, Vanguards have been in the market for the last uh, 25 years or more. And uh, about 85 to 90 percent of these knee replacement, they've got a 20 year survivorship. Thank you. Um, the next person asks, are all knee replacements conducted on the spinal block? Majority of the patients are recommended to have a spinal and uh, a block. But again, at the end of the day, our anesthetists, we have got an excellent team of anesthetists who can um, uh, talk to the patients at the time of surgery. So some of the patients are very apprehensive in having a spinal. They would like to be put to sleep, not hear any noises. But uh, our team of excellent anesthetists can give some sedation for them to sleep. And they also regard that this is safer in having a, a spinal and a block. That's how majority of the knee replacements are, and hip replacements are being done at Bend. But it's again, it is down to patient's choice. One always respects patient's wish, what they prefer to, and then they go along with the patients. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, this person asks, is bilateral knee surgery done in the same sitting? And how effective are injections and do they affect the surgery? Um, bilateral total knee replacements, it is not a thing that um, it is uh, that we have inherited in, um, uh, in uh, United Kingdom. Uh, we always uh, do one replacement at a time. The reason being of the risks outweigh the benefits because the risk being one will be in significant amount of pain and also the risks of DVT and pulmonary embolism are higher. Uh, it is done in states and in Asian countries like in Singapore and India, but uh, we are evidence-based. So it is in the best interest of the patients that we do not do or carry out uh, replacements at the same sitting. So if you had steroid injections, it could certainly help temporarily. So one could have a knee replacement and also an injection into the other knee, which is affected. And you can defer the surgery for a minimum period of four to six months before we consider it on the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this person asks, um, can I cycle after surgery? So they're, they're asking how, how flexible would their knee joint be? Can they cycle after surgery? In, um, yeah, it is a good question. So again, uh, with regard to cycling, one would encourage uh, people to do exercises and one, you got good range of movements. Your knee is flexing to about nearly 120. So it is reasonable for you to get back to cycling. But I would um, go uh, with the physiotherapist on their assessment and also speak to the respective consultant who has performed the surgery. And uh, they can measure how much flexion you have got. And if you got good flexion, then I see why not you should not be cycling. So most of my patients, they go back to cycling after a period of three months. Um, so I would recommend uh, the person to ask, uh, to engage a dialogue with the physiotherapist and the respective surgeon who has performed their replacement surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have got a few sporty people on tonight, it looks. Um, so 
And somebody asking, what's the possibility of playing tennis after a knee replacement? I assume the answer would be similar to previous. Yeah. I mean, impact sports, I always tell them uh, that this is um, an artificial joint, which is subjected to wear and tear. The more you stress it out, the poly will wear, and it is it creates a poly debris, which contributes to loosening. So ideally, we I, I do not recommend, but some of my patients have gone back to playing tennis, and they also have gone back to playing golf within six weeks. So ideally, I mean, I would uh, not personally recommend, but if one were to play gentle tennis, not a very high impact or high intense tennis, it's absolutely fine after three months. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, this person asks, and excuse my pronunciation on this one, do you do injections of arthrosamid? We do. We have hyaluronic acid injections, which is a type 1 collagen. These uh, benefit the patients with arthritis and um, then patients are allowed to have, uh, when they're called the membership, they're allowed uh, one injection on their membership. And also NHS patients, also we can give, um, well, they need to get a e-referral for these uh, injections. As, um, and uh, we can give steroid injection, but not Orthromax or PRP injections. We have not been giving it pen. Right. Mm -hmm. This person says, uh, I had my knee replaced at the beginning of August. I am pretty mobile, but uh, my knee and lower K, not sure what they're referring to there, lower K still a little bit swollen and I still get odd aches. Will my knee eventually get back to normal? So 1st of August is only about uh, three months down the line. Um, so, oh, September, yeah. So ideally, you want to get an optimum benefit. It can take up to six months in certain individuals. And majority of the patients, though they recover between six weeks, three months, the optimum benefit one could get is about six months. So I would recommend this person to continue with exercises with a view to strengthen the quadriceps muscle, which is the extensor muscle. Uh, with a view to improve his uh, extensor mechanism and quadriceps function. So uh, ideally, if we still have got major issues, then um, I would certainly get in with the surgeon who has performed the surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Next attendee says, I'm 74 years old and had a total knee replacement in 2012. I have rheumatoid arthritis and lately this knee is feeling stiff and starting to cause me pain. Does this mean I may need a revision? Uh, no, it's only a very short period of time. So one need to have a diagnosis. Uh, it is important that uh, he's assessed thoroughly um, and uh, one need to have a diagnosis after an assessment why this is causing him severe pain stiffness and whether there is something loose mechanically that is happening. He should have a plain radiographs uh, to see whether there's loosening or not. And people can then get on and do CT scans. And, um, and also he should have routine blood tests as a standard routine practice because some can be secondary to low-grade infections. So one need to rule out all these things. And um, if all these measures fail to improve the symptoms, it would be reasonable to for him to be considered for an arthroscopic surgery with a view to see whether there is any delamination of poly or not before one can embark on revision surgery. You need to have a specific diagnosis before we put patients through a revision major total knee replacement. That's what I would sincerely recommend. This attendee asks, what would recovery be from patellofemoral joint replacement? 
I mean, though the, uh, this is isolated joint, which is a petrofemoral replacement, and the recovery can vary from six weeks to three months. So for any knee, including partial, though the recovery is quicker when compared to standard total knees, so I would still say between six weeks to three months. Okay. Um, the final question, I think this, you may probably refer back to um, earlier answers, but this person says, I'm a, I was a keen walker. Will I be able to resume walking a distance of, say, five miles? After, uh, following knee replacement surgery, yes, you can walk up to uh, five miles, but listen to the knee. If the knee is not liking it, I think you should reduce a bit of uh, miles. But people who had knee replacements after a period of six months, they resume their normal activity levels. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. We have come to the end of our attendees' questions. So, um, Mr. Reddy, please can you move on to the last slide in the presentation, if you don't mind? Yeah. Thank you. So, um, as a thank you for uh, joining this session, we're offering uh, as listed on the screen there, 50% off the value of your consultation, a call back from your dedicated private patient advisor, and an email tomorrow with a recording of this session and further information, and also updates on news and future events. If you would like to book your consultation following this webinar, our private patient team can take your call until 8 p.m tonight or you can call back between 8 a.m and 6 p.m monday to friday using the number listed on your screen to the right of your screen there and following this webinar you will receive a survey and we'd appreciate it very much if you could fill that survey out when this session closes to um, improve our future events with your feedback and our next webinar we have scheduled is treatment for enlarged prostate and you can sign up to that via our website. I realise that we are finishing a little bit early today um, but all that remains for me to say on behalf of Mr Reddy and the team here at Benenden Hospital I'd like to say thank you for tuning in this evening and we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.